I'm gonna tell you the brutal truth. We're not that good looking in America. <laughs> <laughs> but then there was a moment where I thought to myself, you know what, I'm gonna start a new life. I'm gonna throw everything I have in the States away Damn. and just move and I'm gonna be an actor. I was like a university student. And when I didn't have class, I would cast for commercials, mm. get paid and then spend all that money on manga. <laughs> Wait, and seriously, that's what I did. <laughs> Sorry. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So for those of you who don't know, I work as an actor in Thailand. I'm half Thai and half Australian, but I was actually born... <laughs> the sip is gonna be in the background. It's right. gonna be great. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So for those of you who don't know, I'm actually an actor working in Thailand. I'm half Australian, half Thai, but I was born in Australia and lived there until I was 20 years old and I didn't speak a word of Thai before moving here. So, I'm a foreign actor working in Thailand, which is the theme of today's video. So a lot of you guys watching may already know my story, so I thought it would be really fun to have a special guest on today who also shares similar experiences with me being a foreign actor in Thailand, and that is... Wow! Luke Ishkal Plowden. Yes. Hello, everybody. I'm very excited to be here. Thanks for coming on the Thank channel, you for man. Having me I, here. I really appreciate it. Like, yeah. I don't usually have guests, so I'm a little bit more nervous than usual. I, you know, I really thought I had this whole like uh, talking to the camera thing under control until I had a had a guest on, and now it's just like how it used to be. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, I want to know how it used to be. By the way, guys, Luke is from America. I am from Australia. Luke is half uh, American, half Japanese, and I'm half Australian, half Thai. Anyway, um, in today's video, guys, me and Luke are gonna talk about what it's like working as a foreign actor in Thailand. And it's really awesome having Luke on because I'm not trying to like, you know, blow smoke up your ass or like, you know, like, feed the ego. But in my opinion, Luke is arguably one of the most successful foreign actors to ever make it in Thailand, which I think is like pretty fair. You can say, you can say yes, you can say yes. I'll, 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 I'll agree. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, if there's anyone, and by the way guys, there aren't that many foreign actors working in Thailand or just foreign people working in the entertainment industry I would at all. say there's very few foreign people who come to Thailand who then act in Thai content, who then act in Thai entertainment. As somebody who is like, has speaking parts and like has a storyline and that mm -hmm. sort of thing where they have to speak Thai. Mm -hmm. But as far as like in general foreign actors living in Thailand who are casted in various roles as support characters or as just like maybe villains, <laughs> that sort of thing, uh, I would say there's, there's quite a bit. Um, and actually now there are many, many Hollywood films that are filmed in Thailand. Oh, true that. That are filmed like in Thailand using using Thai studios, using Thai staff and Thai production companies. So for foreigners interested in coming to Thailand and living here and you're an actor, it's like, and you're connected to the right people, you can still make a living. Mm -hmm. You can still really even make it onto the big screen without having to be in Los Angeles or in New York and those sort of things. So. Mm -hmm. I actually just learned that really recently. I I'm honestly really didn't really know that, but I got a kind of funny story yeah. like, related to that. One time I was playing an extra on a foreign production uh, in Thailand. It was like on Netflix, I can't remember what it was called. It was like the one with like Woody Harrelson. And it's, it's actually, the show is in Japan, but they shot some of the action scenes here. So I was supposed to play this like Yakuza guy. Yeah. And I went there for like 6 p.m. and was there until 6 a.m. And when it came time to shoot the scene, they're like, oh, actually, we don't need you. And I was like, oh my gosh. I was like, that's okay. <laughs> that's, I was a poor university student as well. So I actually really needed the money to pay for my semester fees that year. So it, like, if I if I didn't go that to that like job, I wouldn't have had enough money to pay for my semester fees. So it worked out fine. But I was also kind of like, could you just let me could you just let me go home like 10 hours earlier? But anyway, yeah. but relating to what you said, like there's a lot of foreign productions, but like getting into like a Thai production, mm -hmm. I think is like still fairly difficult if you don't speak fairly good Thai. You know, if you want like a like main recurring yes. character role, it would be like, I would say kind of impossible. Difficult. If you speak Thai with an accent that's clearly foreign, then that's not gonna that's not gonna fly. Yeah, let's just get started by talking about how we both got into the industry. Mm. So I was a master's student in statistics in the United States. I did not do my research, people. I apologize in advance. No, no, no. no. <laughs> so I was a, I was I got my undergraduate degree 
at the George Washington University in statistics. And at the time, I thought, well, I really like this subject, and I know that it's a really stable career path moving forward to do data science and statistics. It still is, by the way, for those of you who are in that field. And so that's what I thought I wanted to do. So out of college, it's typ it's difficult to get a job right away. So if you then go on to a master's degree, uh, in statistics and then maybe do something else, uh, get some other kind of education or work as an internship as a, as a data analyst somewhere, that's kind of the career path forward. So I was getting my master's degree in statistics and realizing this is maybe not what I, mm -hmm. not really what I signed up for. Mm -hmm. And also I have a, I have an autoimmune disease called ankylosing spondylitis, which is a, a disease that is over time, it can fuse my spine together. Yeah, so if I if I don't live an active lifestyle, things can get really bad with my back. Oh, okay. So it's like the most like sed sed sedentary you are, then it's like gonna like yes, it has yeah. the potential to get worse and worse. So I was realizing this because a lot of my days I was spent you know at a desk oh, doing right, kind right. of like working things, and you know that's that's very normal for a lot of people. But for me, because I have this disease, it my back really started hurting. Um, and I realized maybe I have to do something different. And at the same time, I was working at a research firm and then I was coming home and like also getting my master's degree. And then also I had a job. I was a waiter at one point, I actually <laughs> I had that job. But my, my landlord at the time was this woman named Jennifer Laurie. And I thought you were going to say Jennifer Lawrence. I was like, damn. Yeah, no, no. Jennifer, <laughs> Jennifer Laurie. She's a wonderful, wonderful lady. And she told me, you should be a model because you are very handsome. And I was like, that's the first time I've ever heard somebody say that to me so directly. Can, and I, can I butt in for a yes. second? I feel like in Western countries, mm. even like if guys are handsome or like girls are like good looking, I feel like we don't really say it out loud, but in Asia, it's like a totally different thing. Like if you're like good looking people, well, like in Thailand, they'll be like, oh, like lol. Like people just tell you, like sometimes people you don't even know, like strangers will be like, oh, like you're so good looking. It's like, huh, thanks. <laughs> But like, but like, I mean, like, I, no, I'm not saying I'm good looking or whatever. I mean, like, <laughs> you know, generally speaking, you know what I mean. But you know what I mean. Like in yes. Australia, it's like no one, no one said that to me. Hey, look, you're a professional model. Okay? <laughs> you're a professional now model and actor. Hey, right? people, people have glow ups. Guys, you can have glow ups. Yeah. Like however you looked when you're young, it doesn't define you when you become an adult. That's right. But anyway, uh, I just feel like yeah, in Asia, people are a lot more vocal about. I'm gonna tell you the brutal truth. We're not that good looking in America. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, I think if we looked like Brad Pitt or some, you know, kind of formation of that walking around in the States, honestly, I think people would tell you. Fair enough. Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. So that's that's the that's the unfortunate. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, we're in the right place. Yeah, we're in the, that's what that means. That's what that means. We're but anyway, right yeah. So Asia. Jennifer Laurie. Jennifer said, t started helping me. So she took some photos for me. We were just went out to different places around. We were living in Washington D.C. and I started uploading them onto Instagram and using hashtags like Hapa and half -y, half Japanese, half American. And it turns out, I had no idea about this before, but in general, Lukung, or like half Asian, half Western, this look is very popular in Thailand. And happens to be a very popular look for commercial, commercial modeling mm -hmm. in Asia. So an international model scout contacted me on Instagram in three weeks. Damn after uploading photos on Instagram. Nice. And I was so surprised. I thought this is a scam for sure. No way, this guy's legit. So I asked him like, so who are the models that you represent? And he sent me like all these different profiles. And so I messaged them individually and I was like, is this guy legit? And they all, actually three of them got back to me and said, yeah, he's, he's a legit guy. Like I've been in here and this and that and he's a really great guy. Uh -huh. So I was like, wow, <laughs> okay. Now in hindsight, this guy could have also been posing as those other accounts. But seeing as those other accounts seem like they were pretty legit maintained, mm -hmm. like real people, it didn't seem like they were like run by the same guy. I thought, you know what, okay. So then he just sent me like three model contracts from Hong Kong, from Thailand, and from Singapore of being like, yeah, we'll pay for your flight out, come do, do a modeling trip here for three months. And I was like, what? Mm, mm -hmm. First of all, I had never even had any notion, any inkling about Thailand before, other than the name, mm -hmm. literally other than the name, before the head scouting agent from area management got me on Skype and said, 
come to Thailand first for your first modeling trip. Mm -hmm. At this point in time, I was, uh, am I really gonna do this? But then there was a moment where I thought to myself, you know what, I'm gonna start a new life. I'm gonna throw everything I have in the States away Damn. and just move and I'm gonna be an actor and I'm gonna dedicate myself to becoming so, an actor. So like before, so you weren't like, I wanna be a model at first, you were like. No, I know I needed to be an actor. Damn. Because I knew that a model career is very short and not necessarily great money, but an acting career mm. can be as long as, as you're committed to it. So I made that decision and my first plan was to go to Thailand and then to Hong Kong and then to Singapore and then to go back to the States mm -hmm. to do these three month modeling contracts, which I'm sure you're familiar with. And to try and make it in the States, having built this portfolio in Asia, and then go to Los Angeles somewhere and figure it out and be an actor there. Oh, okay. So when you said I decided to be an actor, you, you didn't mean specifically in Thailand. No. You were like, oh, okay, okay, okay. I just knew that I had to do it and like a modeling, um, building a modeling portfolio before going there is a, you know, it's a way to, is a way to, what I thought was a stepping stone for it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But when I came to Thailand and then I got like a lot of commercial jobs and then I ended up kind of getting into the community, uh, going to, some parties, this and this and that event, somebody from channel seven said, if you can learn Thai, you can be an actor here. So I thought, well, I kind of like it here. <laughs> you know what, it's cheap. Yeah. The food's great. The people seem to really like me. <laughs> you have to remember that in the first week, like literally the second, the third day after I landed in Thailand, I went on Rong Seidu with Jenny Banan. Okay, okay. And after that, from I, w I was at 700 some followers on Instagram, I went up to 50,000. Damn. After that one show. Dude, that's crazy. Yeah. Damn. So I thought, okay, Thailand seems to really like me mm -hmm. as like a like the face. Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay. And the money seems to be kind of flowing with modeling and stuff. So I can just do modeling and then, you know, learn and commit myself 100% to learning Thai and mm -hmm. getting in. And so I never thought it was a risk. Like my 22 year old self was like, you can do it. Mm. Like just commit mm. as hard as you can. But even if like you didn't, like if you decided at some point to like change your mind, you're still like young enough where like, like if you not fail, but you know what I mean? Like at 22, like even if you at 25, you're like, maybe this is not for me. You still got like plenty of time to like change like career path or something as well. But right. That's yeah, but I, I never had that in the back of my mind at all. I was Dude, just like, that's crazy. Hundred percent commitment, no compromise. Nice. So after I heard that, I immediately hired a Thai tutor to teach me Thai, and so I studied for four hours a week for that's two years. That's the next. With that's the, the next question. That's the next question. Okay. So, so yeah. That's how I got into the industry. Well, actually, not really. So I <laughs> just because that, that's only the first part. That's only the, disregard everything we just said. Well, no, no, it's the real story. <laughs> so fast forward, pass or skip over the Thai learning phase. I was contacted to play a series called Wolf Game Not Her. Mm -hmm. Was it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, that's the game not her. It's a series about like a game that they set like a bunch of people up to like go around the world and complete all these missions. And I was the love interest for the main girl in in Japan. Oh, nice. So yeah, I actually, my first role, I got to speak English and a little bit of Japanese actually. Is that like, did they like make the role like Japanese-ish for you because of like Ishikawa or like? They knew that they wanted to do something interesting in Japan. And so they knew that they had to have some somebody over there. Mm -hmm. uh, my Yeah, the, the lead girl was Pan Pan. Oh, uh, yeah. damn. Yeah. <laughs> For like the first series? Yeah, yeah. Dude, that's crazy. I remember. I remember. I, I like, I didn't watch obviously the show because yeah. I, don't, I don't know about you. I don't actually watch like a lot of Thai television. Just can't mostly. say that. Can't say that. No, you can say that. <laughs> hey, this is this is this is my channel. We can say whatever we want. I don't I, honestly. I don't watch a lot of Thai television. I watch uh, the stuff that I'm in, and I watch some of the stuff my friends are in. Oh, okay, 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 okay. And and that's about. No, uh, I don't watch zero. Oh, okay, but, okay, but okay, I just okay. don't watch a lot. In in general, okay. I, yeah, I, in I, general. But I yeah. I remember I remember the scenes like seeing seeing you and Bun Bun. I was like, really? Yeah. Wow. Like, it was like on you know just like on like Discover on like Instagram. Uh, Okay, okay. Yeah, so that, and that was with GMMTV. And so uh, a little bit after that, there was this show called Nai Hayama Oi, mm -hmm. which is about, yeah, like, and Oh My Boss is the series. And so at the time, a director, Kun Chai Adam, was really interested in doing this series. At the time he was casting and looking around on Instagram and he found my profile and he was like, 
this is the guy. So you didn't have to audition for it? No, nope, didn't have to audition for it, yeah. He just he just handpicked me and then DMMTV contacted my, Black, my manager, mm -hmm. and said they have a role for you to be the lead guy in this series, but you have to sign with GMMTV uh, if you're gonna do yeah, it. Yeah, which is like regular. Yeah, <clears throat> so, so I was like, well, <laughs> That's a no-brainer. <laughs> like, just immediately achieve the dream. I mean, like, everyone watching probably knows already, but just in case you don't know, GMM is like, probably like the biggest talent management and also just general production company in Thailand. So yeah. being handpicked to like be in a GMM series and being like, by the way, you, you have to join us. It's like, like Luke said, not even something that you would really think about. Just be like, yes, yes, sir. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> absolutely. So, and yeah, since then I've done 10 is series. I have my movie coming out at the end of this year with Five Star, it's Five Star Productions. It's called Slith. Uh, but I'm assuming we'll get into yeah, yeah. promotional stuff later. Yeah, my, my, my experience was pretty much the same. So I moved here when I was 20 with my family because they were like, we're moving to Thailand. And I was like, I actually, um, I would like to stay in Australia. And they were like, nope, we're moving to Thailand. I was like, okay then. So we moved here and then my mom was like, yeah, like you should at least cast because there's like a chance that you could get like, you know, some work, get some money. So my mom found a modeling agency in, uh, based in Thailand. And so I was with them for like the first three, four years and like, yeah, just cast. Red? No, not red. It was like, it's, it doesn't exist anymore actually. Okay. Yeah, yeah, which is All like right. kind of fun. It's not funny. It's not funny, but it's kind of funny. <laughs> <laughs> and so yeah, I was casting for commercials and learning Thai because I mm. couldn't speak Thai. So similar to you, I had a private tutor. Yeah. Yeah, and then I did that for a while. And then similar to you kind of like, there was casting for a BL series called My Engineer, which was the one with like Cooper and Boy. Mm. And um, there was a half character that they were casting for called Ram, which is the character I ended up getting. He's a half character. He doesn't talk that much. Uh -uh. Yeah, because he's just like really silent. And they reached out to me on Instagram. And so, yeah, I got them to like contact my management and I went for an audition and then got it. And mm. then after that, I don't know, my career like took some interesting turns, but um, yeah, I got to like be in a few other series with different productions. What, at what, what time was My Engineer, right? It was on air in 2020. We shot it at the end of 2019. Wow, okay. So like for the first five years while I was at uni, I was like a university student, poor as fuck. And when I didn't have class, I would cast for commercials, mm. get paid, and then spend all that money on manga. <laughs> and seriously, that's what I did very early on. Because like, I, I just moved here. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. No, seriously. I this just, is legit money, by the way. I mean, he's getting, he's get for a commercial, you'll get like, what, 40,000, no, 50,000, no, maybe 100,000 sometimes. No, dude, I wasn't no? getting paid that much. I wasn't getting paid that much. <laughs> what? No, like sometimes, if not, for me, a big one was 50,000. Like that was for me, like I was like, oh, I'm making bank on this one. And that was before uh, my manager's cut. Oh. <laughs> 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 yeah, so anyway, as this is why it's important to have different people and to share their experiences because as you can see, we don't all have the same experience. <laughs> no, dude, a lot of mine, especially early on, were like 20,000 to 25,000. For commercials? For TV commercials. What the? Dude, I think the difference is mine was based in Thailand, whereas yours is like an international one. So maybe they can like get more money or maybe my agency was taking more money. Who knows? Who really knows? I will never be able to get the answer to that. And also it's in the past and we don't we don't dwell on the past too much because we can't change it. But I anyway. Think your agency was. <laughs> um. Yeah, so I was getting <laughs> like, so for example, yeah, if it was like 25,000 baht, which is roughly like a thousand dollars, I guess, then you take the manager's cut and then I'd be left with, you know, Whatever, it's just like six. Okay, still, this is like 20,000 baht. A good amount of money, that's like a rent. That's Guys, like an not in one blow. I wasn't spending it like, I wasn't <laughs> okay, like, okay. I wasn't like, I wasn't getting paid walking into the bookstore and walking out with like bags. <laughs> but I did spend a lot of it on manga. Okay, okay, okay. Early on. Yeah, yeah. But like also, now this is, you know, not to like try and like backtrack, but I had just moved to Thailand, didn't have any friends. I was like very isolated. And I was just like, mm -hmm. dude, when I first moved, before I was a university student, I would spend a lot of time at home and I would just binge watch. Like I binge watched every season of The Office, how I met your mother, started watching Game of Thrones. Like I would just, I would, I had my computer like sideways on the ground in my bedroom and I would just lay on the ground. Like I would learn Thai in the morning and then the rest of the day I would just be like lying on my side, just like watching US TV. 
Oh no. Yeah, so I'm glad you made it out of, <laughs> I'm glad you made it out of those times. Yeah, so um But I get it. You know, you were 20 years old and coming into a completely new country, you didn't want to be here. Well, that's the thing. It's like cuz I'm half Thai. Yeah. People will assume that like, oh, so you could already speak. It's like I literally couldn't speak it. Like Luke doesn't have Thai blood. I do. But that doesn't mean like I'm better or like have well, I do have the advantage of having heard it from a young age. Yeah. But my mum mostly spoke to me in English, mm. which a lot of people don't know. Like, it was like an English speaking household. Yeah. You know what? Why don't we just, should we give people some advice for people who want to try and work in the entertainment industry in Thailand? Sure. So, yeah, for anybody who's, okay, casting for stuff in Thailand, who is it? If you're a potentially model right now, the advice that I can give you is you got to be nice. You gotta be, you gotta be talkative. You gotta be friendly. You gotta give your 100% energy to that camera, mm -hmm. um, because in Thailand, like the vibe, the vibe for getting the role is very, it's overacting. Um, oh yeah, for commercials. For yeah. commercial, it's completely overacting. Uh, like a like a happy emotion is like, uh, <laughs> <laughs> like a dude when you drink something <laughs> when you drink something delicious, you're like. Don't do that, don't do that. <laughs> Let's just say one option that you guys have is modeling. Yeah. Whether it be like run, you can do like runway modeling, which you probably need to be tall, which I am not. Did you do, did you do much like run, run, like I think I walked stuff? maybe five or six shows. Yeah. Yeah, so there's runway modeling. Another one is like what we did. Which which is not a lot, by the way. Uh, five or six, you, if you want to be a runway model, you need to be about, for a guy, you should be about 6'2". Yeah. Uh, 186, 7, 190, that sort of range to be walking consistently, I think. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah. But, but I'm not like, because I, I was never really in the model world. I, was, I just did like commercials. So is there like a lot of work opportunities for that kind of modeling, do you think, in Thailand? Fashion, yeah, sure. Uh, but volume of work, I would say not bad. Uh, you, you gotta have the height. You uh, really, yeah. you really gotta have the height. Um, I'm 184, which is quite tall for Asia in general. Mm -hmm. But for fashion modeling, you should you should be taller than this. Right, right. Oh, for and, guys, by the way, that's for guys. Yes. Well, no, for girls too, right? For no fashion. freaking yeah, yeah. way. Well, okay, so that yeah. tall. For a fashion model, yeah. Really? I mean, not one, 190. Right, right, right. Minimum 175. Damn. Minimum 175. Damn. Yeah. You heard of folks? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Minimum 175. Damn. Because uh, then with heels, you'll go up to around uh, 180. Right, right, right. Yeah. So for for catalog, that sort of stuff, you know, height doesn't matter as much, but you know, it's you're you're competing in a very heavy market space. Um, That's the thing. It's not like there's like a demand in the market for foreign models. There's a lot of people here, so it's not like you can come in and like fill a niche. There's a lot of no, competition yeah, yeah, there's a as well. Super big competition. And now you're not just competing with humans. You're competing with AI. So can I just say? I mean, like I know how it works with like connections and stuff, but how come the AI is verified on Instagram and I can't get Instagram verification? They're not even a real person. All right, so after runway or fashion modeling, there's like what we did, commercial modeling. Yeah. So you go casting for TV commercials. And the great thing about it is like a lot of the roles aren't speaking. So you don't need to speak Thai to be in uh, Thai TV commercials, which is pretty cool. But it's a very timely process. The casting process, like you just be in a room for hours waiting to get your hair and makeup done. Even if you're the first, you get there and it's like, according to who gets there first, it's not like you book a time to go, which would actually be pretty cool if you could like book in advance. But anyway, the system here is you get there and you get a number, you sit down, you wait to get your hair and makeup done and then you get called in the room and the whole th process from when you arrive to when you finish can take like two to three hours. I would say average on two or three hours. If you're lucky, maybe like an hour, but if you get there, and there's a bunch of people already waiting. You could, I mean, you don't have to stay there. You can go and come back. But then yeah. if you miss your queue, then it's like kind of annoying. But yeah, it could take like up to five hours. And then if you get the job, you go to a fitting, you try on the clothes and then another day of shooting. And well, like we found out before, you it's you can get paid quite a bit of money apparently. I didn't, <laughs> I didn't know about this. I was getting paid chump change. Luke's over here making bank. Like <laughs> yeah, so I think my my agency. I'm very lucky with the agency that I was with, uh, that I am with now. Wait, She's wh very wait, what was it again? Area. Yeah, I, I've seen. Yeah, 
looks like a good one. Yeah. So that's that's the first that's the first thing. If you're gonna have an agency, make sure that you know you've read the contract with your agency. You know what you're getting yourself into. And do you want to tell them about the 90 day contracts just in case like they're not aware? So the standard modeling contract within a and it it's usually based on visa stuff. So the reason why it's 90 days, three months in a certain country is because they can bring you in on on a tourist visa, give you a temporary work permit for the 90 days that you'll be there. And that's what it is for, for models right now. Uh, they don't want to give longer longer work permits to, to models. And um, is it, I don't know if my understanding is correct or not. So they will cover your expenses, like your accommodation and living expenses. But if you get jobs, then you have to pay them back. Correct. Right. Yeah. But yeah. if you don't. Well, and it's also depends on the agency, right? Oh, okay. Yeah. But if you don't get jobs, you can just, Get out of here? No, no, no. Then you owe, then you owe the money. No way. Yeah, then you then you owe the money. Yeah, yeah I never did that because I moved here with my family. So right, right. Some so if you have an agency that believes that you'll that you'll work really well, a lot of the time what they'll do is they'll advance your flight ticket, and then yeah, sometimes they'll advance your rent or maybe not at a, at a certain place. But then like the money that you make with modeling, right? You right. know, you pay that off because models are if you're not if you're not making money, you're pretty poor. So that's the thing, man. Like, even if you're an actor, just being an actor is not the most stable. It was yeah. definitely not the most stable job yeah. for sure. Uh, it's like any, it's like any super competitive industry. Mm -hmm. You're gonna have. But what what I do like about acting is I think it's different than different than some industries. Like, you can still make a living mm -hmm. as long as you have like skills. And what's what's cool about supporting roles is that if you if you've made a name for yourself as a as a good actor. You know, not as a celebrity or whatever, oh, like a but like yeah, a reliable yeah. actor who can show up on time, be nice on set, be really good to co-stars, be a positive energy, mm -hmm. know your lines, know your character, do all the do all the things. You know, I'm a casting director. I'm gonna and I've worked with you before. I'm like, oh, this kid like knows what he's like. He's you know one, two, three, four, five, really good. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna think about you for another role. Mm -hmm. That's why I think I know a lot of freelance actors and then people who you know end up playing side characters, but then they have so much work mm -hmm. and reasonably flex flexible schedules because like you'll oh they'll be filming like three series at a time. Yeah, because to. The Thai entertainment industry is kind of exploding. There's Channel 7, Channel 3, GMM TV, View, and there's Disney all this, Plus, the, the streaming, yeah. The, all the, all yeah. these other all these other platforms that are that are that need actors. Yeah. So I, I think if you really commit yourself, it's definitely an industry that you know the sky's the limit. Yeah, for um, sure, for sure. You I can. Think now is a good lucky. time. Now like, is a good time. Uh, back in the day, I would say like, just in terms of opportunities available, like you were saying, cause streaming didn't exist. Like, I mean, it did like Netflix, but like there weren't as many of these different platforms available now that there were before. So, and also I think that more than before, a lot of Thai productions are going global. Mm -hmm. So I think there may, you know, like that in terms of like appealing to a more wider global audience, there may be like, at, le at least more than before, there will be opportunities for foreign actors to like get roles. I mean, if you're a half, half like Asian, then like probably got a higher chance, in my opinion, I would say than being- For a global, for global roles? No, 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 just for getting acting jobs like in Thailand. Mm. I think being half would, would, would help. No, but I think, I think, I think it's a pretty good time um, to, to be in the industry. Obviously, like anything, it's gonna require, like if you're like me and you're you're like 20 years old um, and you're, you're a model, if you were like me and you wanna come to Thailand and then try and start a career, you know, definitely possible, definitely possible. But it's gonna require the same level of dedication that it took us to, to, to get there. Acceptance of the culture, acceptance of that you're gonna have to study Thai, especially if you have no experience studying at all. You're gonna have to buckle down and study that like it's your life uh, for for some time before you even feel like you can communicate effectively with people. Let alone reading a script, let alone acting out that script. But you know, I believe that anything can be accomplished in two years if 100% of your focus is on that. Mm -hmm. But that's the other thing, like with the Thai, is like the learn like written and like written Thai and also like colloquial Thai, like, you know, like speaking with locals and using like slang and stuff like that, because if you can't use or understand slang, then a lot of the stuff you learn, I mean, it's still applicable, but it's like, you will feel like lost or like, mm. you know what I mean? Like, and that's with any language, not just Thai, you know what I mean? Cause like, that's how 
grammatically correct, they might say it like this. Grammatically, technically, it's incorrect, but that's how people say it kind of thing. Like you learn all that stuff along the way, especially by what Luke said, like immersing yourself and talking with Thai people. Like that, like that's, I sometimes, people, sometimes when I'm on stream, people ask me like, do you have any tips for learning Thai? My number one tip is like, you need to talk to Thai people. Yeah. Yeah, like just like native Thai people is like the best way to, if you want to get better at speaking, you need to speak it with Thai people. If you want to get better listening, you need to listen to Thai people. Yeah. yeah. So we'll just talk about like how, how we learned Thai. Okay, so yeah. you mentioned before that like you started and also myself, we started with private tutors. Yeah. And then I think after that, it's about talking to people. And what I, what I found is the most helpful and I talk to so many Thai people who are like, how do I learn English? How do I learn English? It's because you're too afraid of making mistakes. That's the number one thing. You're too afraid of opening your mouth to use it, knowing that you might be wrong. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I knew this from the from the start is that if you want to learn a language, you have to use it. You have to speak it. You have to be willing to make a fool of yourself in front of people. And and it's wrong to even be using that phrase. Like nobody, honestly, nobody is going to judge you yeah. for saying something incorrectly or pronouncing something wrong. If they know it's not your native language, that person is horrible. If they're going to be like, <laughs> ha ha ha, you said it, you said that, that's wrong. Like ha ha, you stupid. It's like what? You know that I'm learning. Like you don't. You try to do a hard math problem and get it wrong, and somebody's like, ha ha ha, you got that wrong. You're so stupid. Mm. Oh, that's not at all what that. Like you tried, yeah. you know, maybe you didn't get the right answer. Maybe it wasn't hundred percent perfect, mm -hmm. but at least like the effort is there. Yeah. The most, what I think what people find about learning, learning a language is that it's about, it's not about saying something with the perfect grammar or using all the correct words. It's about getting across the message that you want to get across. Mm -hmm. And I, I saw this really cool Ted talk on this and I was like, that is so true. It's like, you have to they compared learning a language to playing a video game. Playing a video game is fun and failing is fine. You because can, there's no consequences. Yeah, you, you just, just redo you, it. Yeah, you yeah. just redo it, you try, you try, and maybe the next time you would get better. And maybe the next time we get your point across a little more clearly, you know, that's the way that you need to learn a language. Mm. I think like one of the cooler things is like when you're learning a language is like realizing that you can say the same thing in a lot of different ways. I think one thing that people get caught up is like you have a sentence in your head or something like, for, for example, I don't know, I can't even think of it that, but you have something in your head and you can't translate that directly into the language that you want to say it in. So you get stuck, mm. but it's like, you don't have to say it like that. You can say it like this. So like, ah, Jesus, I, I wish I had an example, man. Like I need to go to the bathroom, right? There's actually quite a few words in English in that in that sentence. Uh -huh. But really the only thing, the only word that you need to know is bathroom. bathroom. Yeah. <laughs> so you go up to somebody and, you'll, and you're and you Thai and you don't know like the rest of the words around that. If you, so long as you know bathroom or even the direct translation in Thai, you say water room to somebody in America, they're gonna know what you're talking about. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. Like in a restaurant, you know, whatever. Mm. You say water room, mm -mm. they're gonna know. Mm, so, sure. But like for spe specifically with learning Thai, like was there anything that you found? The most difficult tones. Yeah. 100%. And messed then up. they're so messed up, dude, because like, <laughs> because like most of the time, the, but the good thing about Thai is that the tones are in the alphabet. So you can see a word that you've never said or heard before. But if you like have a good understanding of how the alphabet works, you can say it. It's not like an example, like for example, like Chinese where like they use characters. And if you don't know, you don't know. If you don't know, you don't know. Yeah, I know. That, that, like that's it. It's like, it's like done. But with Thai, it's like <laughs> if you get a script, and it's like, I have no idea what this word means, but I can say it. So it's like, that's kind of yeah. cool, but it's difficult. Yeah. The tones are difficult, like super difficult. The hardest for me was getting, seeing so, getting, getting that one right inside of a sentence. That was Were you saying it just like one. flat? Not exactly flat, but not enunciated not, enough, uh, not enough so that it could, so that it sounded Thai. Once you get to a point, I think around year three, year three or four, when I was acting in this, in this and that, and I thought, you know, I, I, start, I started to sound okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, but I wasn't, I still wasn't at the point where people would be like, oh, he could pass for like a half tie. And it's because although people could understand you, they know what you're saying, like pretty much everything. But if you don't force yourself to bring it out, bring out the tones, which is really what brings the whole Thai language to life, you're not gonna sound native. Mm -hmm. And unless unless you practice that multiple hours a day, every day, like Thai people do, you're never gonna get there. Which is why, you know, I've had to, I've sort of had to tam jai nid neng wa ba, I'm never gonna siang jamai muen ba kon Thai 100% yeah. nai chat nia. Yeah. 
and so that but you I can still get to a point where the the goal is to just sound ชัดแล้วก็ความรู้สึกที่ที่ต้องสื่อสารออกมาเหมือนมันออกมาจริงๆอ่ะ That's the that's the important part. As foreigners who are getting into Thai acting right now, uh, and assuming that where our audience right now that we're speaking to is foreigners who also would want to get into the Thai industry, you need to learn how to read and write. Yeah, I think, and the best way to do that is to hire a private tutor, mm, and sure. then to speak it. As much as possible, and not be afraid of making mistakes. Also, when you were mentioning before about you know people who laugh at you when you make mistakes. <coughs> so, <laughs> hey. Okay, some Thai people will laugh at you for. <laughs> no, but here's the thing. Here's the thing. It's like a cultural difference. I feel like. In Western culture, well, no, I can't say Western culture. I don't speak on behalf of every Western. You know, I'm, I can only speak, you know, from my experience. That's why Australia, we have multiple right? people on the on the on. I was gonna say on the podcast. Yeah, I don't have a podcast <laughs> on the video. <laughs> on the video, but um, for example, like physical appearance, we don't comment that much. When people make mistakes, and we don't. I mean, if you're with close friends, like you can laugh. But if you're not close to someone, I feel like we generally don't. Laugh or react too strongly, but in Thailand, especially physical appearance, I'm not saying like it's good or it's bad. It's just a it's just a difference. But Thai people comment like, for me anyway. Like for example, like if I have a pimple, mm. especially my mom, man, she's just like she's like, oh, you you got a pimple? I was like, I know, I know, I saw it in the mirror this morning. But uh, thanks for letting me know. Or like even when um, when I was at when I was, when I was at university, like you know, if I was having like a breakout of pimples, s o m e be like, oh, what happened? I was like. Got got some pimples, like you know what I mean. Like this hasn't happened to me, but like if someone puts on some weight, some like a family member would be like, oh, like you you put on a lot of weight, and apparently like I don't know if this applies to every situation, but it's like a way of like it's like kind of endearing because it's like you notice change about them. It's like it's kind of like saying hello. Apparently, you know what I mean. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. This, so, it's interesting. It's very so, interesting. Yeah. So. They, they, they in like, Western in Western culture, this is a big no-no. It's very taboo, especially yeah, now. Definitely cannot comment on somebody's appearance, particularly negative. Yeah, and also it, like, it doesn't have to be you know in that way. If someone is you know, gets very slim, they'll be like, oh, you like they'll comment on it. People will comment on like changes, and so that was a big shock to me. That was a, like one of the big culture shocks for me when I first moved here was mm. how much people. Commented, and I sometimes I would take those to heart. But it wasn't, it wasn't like hurt. But I was like, you need to say that, like, and then it would make me a little bit self-conscious. But how this mm. relates to what we were saying before is, if you make a mistake, sometimes Thai people might laugh at you, but they're not really being mean. Mm. I mm. feel like, because you know, like sometimes it is funny. Like I've had people say things to me in English, and if they say like, if someone's trying really hard, you're not gonna laugh at them. Be like, haha, you suck. It's not like haha, you suck. But if you say something funny, like yeah. a funny mistake, and people laugh, like it's you got to be strong. Like, right. you, like, like you saying before, like you can't be afraid of making mistakes. And if someone like laughs you or something, you got to bounce back. Yeah. Because yeah. they're not like trying to make you feel bad, and they probably don't realize that it might be hurting your feelings. Yeah. So yeah, you just did you have that? Did you have like people like laugh or like anything like that? I think I v e like จิตใจติดใจกับคำว่ากับคำว่าฝรั่งอ่ะนิดนึง This for sure. But you know, I, I think you have to learn to accept it. Even when, even if I eventually like decide to have kids, and then the, like my kids will be Thai. My kids will be Thai, right? They will, you know, they they won't have the label of ฝรั่ง My kids won't, but I still will. Even as a even as a father, yeah, of of Thai children. In Thailand, mm-hmm. just for you guys at home, like the word p h a l a n g it's like a word that Thai people use that means pretty much anyone outside of Thailand. It's more generally used for Caucasian-looking people. Yes, yes. If you are like Caucasian from a, foreigners, if you are like from a nation like Africa or something like that, I mean, technically you are still f r o n g but in general terms, it's used for ca- Caucasian yeah. foreigners. Yeah. yeah. I had the same thing, man. Like people like call me Falang, and it's like I get it. You know, like I, in my in my heart, I was like. Sometimes uh, it's about like the nam siang. Yeah, I was like, I was like, I get it, but you don't ever say it like that. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> but but like it's not, it's not racist. I feel like. it's not racist, but it's just like a label. It's not said in a derogatory way, but it's just, sometimes it is. It, yeah, yeah. Sometimes, sometimes, it sometimes it is. And like, if especially if they don't know that you understand Thai, then like, yeah, they might say something a little bit nasty. Right. But I feel like it's the kind of like you are not us that makes mm-hmm. me feel like a little bit like, especially because I'm half. Even though 
I didn't. Yeah, that's crazy. Because I didn't grow up here though, so I don't have the cultural connection. Mm. But oh, dude. So this was something I want to ask you about. Okay, so growing up in America as half Asian. Yeah. Was like your like cohort, like the people in your class, like predominantly Caucasian. Yes. So growing up as a kid, did they like call you like Asian or anything like that? I think that I only had a few people kind of poke at that, but not not bullying. I just mean like in general, like people like that were aware that like of your mix, like being being mixed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think I, I'm definitely lucky that about the town that I grew up in again is a university town. Mm -hmm. So there's at least more more Asian, different kind of skin color looking people in that town than necessarily like other small towns in Pennsylvania. Oh, okay. If I had grown up in a different town that didn't have that kind of diversity, mm -hmm. then I think I might have had a different time. Oh, okay. Yeah. Because like, yeah, for me growing up as a kid, I looked more Asian than I did now. You know, jet black hair. I had like more, especially smiling, like I got like the Asian eyes and stuff like that. So my friends, not in a bullying kind of way, but they were like, call me like Asian growing up. I was like the Asian guy. Yeah. No, um, amongst full Asian people though, by the way. Oh. Uh, no, but like no one thought I was 100% Asian, but you know what I mean? Like yeah. there was that kind of like, not separation because like everyone like got along and Australia is very multicultural. Like I remember like growing up in a class with like kids from like Sri Lanka, Vietnam, mm. China, whatever. Mm. But the funny thing was coming to Thailand and people were thinking that I'm 100% white. Mm. And I was like, I was really? like, yeah. No, and that's the thing to us. <laughs> yeah. I think like... because we're half, we can see it. But then like coming here and people thinking like I'm 100% white and getting the furang label. And I was like, I thought, I thought I was one of you guys. Like, no, I didn't think I was like 100% Asian, but I was like, I thought that I would kind of like be more accepted. Like, I just thought like I wouldn't be like, have that kind of like separation. Mm. You know what I mean? Does someone be like, he's white. It's like, oh, actually I'm half. They're like, oh, okay. No, but some people know I'm half, like yeah. from looking at me, but um, especially lately. Lately, I don't know if it's because, I don't know, maybe I grew up a bit and my, the shape of my face changed a little, or maybe the way I dress. Hmm. I guess the way you dress also kind of like plays a role into it, but. Um, Definitely the way you do your hair. Yeah, I yeah. mean like caps and stuff, like caps, uh. like sunnies and like, but yeah, so. That was actually one of my other questions was like, do a lot of Thai people think you're 100% white? No, no. Because I think it's definitely in the eyes and then the skin color. Because you, your complexion is a bit is a bit whiter yeah. um, than mine. Like I have so, like more the yellow tint. And then and then these eyes are very, I have my mom's eyes, very oh, Japanese, okay. yeah. And then the hair is like more jet black. Mm -hmm compared to like a brown. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I don't think anybody like thinks that I'm full white. Yeah. But they they know that I'm definitely not definitely not native Thai. Thai yeah. Some people think I'm half Thai now, but once that's only once they once I speak Thai to them mm -hmm. that they think oh uh, yeah or something. Okay, so you and I have been working in this, especially in the acting scene, I would say like four, four, four years, five years now. Yeah. Do people still ask you if you can read Thai? Yeah. <laughs> like, it's so weird that yeah. even people that I've messaged with, I've messaged with them online and like in Thai. And then like for some reason, like something happened, like we're doing a job and they'll be handing out like, I don't know, a piece of paper with all the instructions or whatever. And, they'll, and they, as they're handing them out, they'll get to me and they'll be like, oh wait, can you read Thai? It's like, dude, we've been, we've been like <laughs> communicating in Thai in written format for like ages. What the, so anyway, I wanted to know if there was anyone else going through the same thing that I was going through. Yeah, yeah, I think, I think that is a bit surprising as well. Uh, but you know, I give them benefit of the doubt. It's like, it's never, for, for me, it's never been with people who I've, that, that seems really weird to me. <laughs> no, where the, where no. the, you're like, pim pim tai ka paola. Yeah, it's really random. It's really random. Like, I guess like, I mean, these are not people that are like my inner, inner circle, but these are people, these are like, st not not friends. These are like yeah. staff, staff members that I have right. worked with and things like that. No, I think, I this this definitely happens, but it's it's about I give them the benefit of the doubt because they're just like oh they probably don't know they've never worked with me before mm -hmm. and all they know is that oh he's been for longer ah uh, okay yeah yeah I mean it's not bullying or anything it's just like it's actually out of concern because if right because they're just asking like if I, if I said no I can't read then they'll give me English copy you know what I mean right, right. it's just like a double check but it's still kind of like you know I read scripts for a living, right? Right, yeah, yeah. Out. But yeah, anyway, I do get that occasionally and it's kind of, no, but like, I don't make a big deal of it. I'm not, I just say, yeah, like, and it's over. I don't, I'm not like, excuse me. Like, they're like, can you speak time? I'm like, yeah, I can. And then that's it. Like, it's not a big deal, but it's just kind of funny. Like, it's, I'm like. <laughs> <laughs>
that kind of stuff happens like every yeah. hour. So this was actually um, uh, from from a fan, and I thought it was really interesting. Do you think that if you were acting in English, which is our native language, do yeah. you think that you could be more like expressive, or do you think the acting process would be easier for you if you were in your native language? Yes. Uh, unfortunately, so uh, it's just it kind of goes back to what we were talking about. Even though I've been here for five years, even though I've like, tang jai, tang jai lian, tang jai pu, tang jai tham project, nu ni ni nu ni nan bap kui kui bai lui an nu ni nan still not going to be the same as 18 years of English fluency, you mm-hmm. know. Mm-hmm. And this really happened to me when I was auditioning for I was auditioning for a Hollywood role and doing a screen casting and like the, it was a pretty long script right but I just read it in like I read it over three times and then I could do everything you mm-hmm. know it's <laughs> yes yeah, no. it's so different it is versus like you get a you get a high script if it's long you have like oh the oh this sentence there's like a few it's kind of long and then yeah, it's a little bit more you have to remember and then a long sentence here and mm-hmm. then. You know, you really it takes the time is much different, and then you do have to use a lot more brain energy and memorization, uh, emotional understanding to not only understand all the words and then understand the full context of what's being said with between in in, in Thai. Mm-hmm. So yes, it would be it would be easier for me. But at this point now, I've done I've done many I've done quite a few projects, so I'm I'm very confident in in. In Thai mm-hmm. scripts. I mean, like I, I, I would feel like the same way. Like, I think if I was acting in English, it would be a much faster process. Especially like you said, uh, memorizing scripts. Like, yeah, you get better over time. Like anything that you do, like constantly, you get better at. But I have had like lines in English, and I just like read them once or twice, and it's like, yep, yeah, I'm ready. Yeah. But also, this is like. Not just a foreign actor speaking a foreign language uh, script remembering tip, but this is just for actors in general. Like, never just remember your own lines. Mm. You need to. You don't have to memorize the other person's lines, but obviously, what you say is reactionary to what the person says to you. Yep. And I think that also helps with remembering because I used to read by myself, but then for the, my most recent series, I got my brother to read the other roles for me. Oh yeah, and that helps so much. Remembering like what you're gonna say back because like if they say like you're an ass, I usually don't swear on the channel. But if they say like, anyway, it doesn't matter. I can do whatever I want because it's my channel. If they say like you're an asshole, and then you say like what? Uh, that was like the worst example <laughs> ever. <laughs> all right, right. You're right. an asshole. What? <laughs> no, no, but like, <laughs> no. Let's just say okay. What's that? Like, if someone says like, why did you come home late today? Then like, obviously like you, you know whatever you, whatever reason you're gonna say like you know that what you have to say like is the reason for that. So it helps to remember like that way. So and also like when you're acting, if you only remember your own lines, like it's gonna be in my opinion not a great acting process because that kind of means that like you've already decided how you're gonna deliver everything. Mm-hmm. Whereas, like, you don't know how they're gonna say it to you, so how can you know how you're gonna say it back, kind mm-hmm, of thing? You know mm-hmm, what I mean? Mm-hmm. Anyway, so I think yeah, that's also another thing that's really helped out is like having someone to read with, even if it's not the person playing that role. Right. Right. Yeah. So yeah, I agree. Completely. Shout out to my brother. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. Appreciate it. Eleven right? Uh, we're, we're eleven years apart, so he's actually seventeen. I'm tw- I'm twenty nine, so he's turning eighteen this year. You moved here when you were twenty. Yeah. Okay, so nine years ago. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it's a long time, man. Yeah. I've been, been here for a while. Yeah, probably too long. No, no, no. That's mean. It's not funny. <laughs> it's mean and not funny. It's not funny. It's a joke, guys. It's, yeah, it's a yeah. joke. Been here for a while. <laughs> <laughs> so if, when you're like shooting a TV show, yeah, do you ever like? Mess up a line, or like there will be like a line when you were practicing that is like a little bit difficult, and mm-hmm. like you might like say it right 80 to 90 percent of the time, but then like when you get to the like actual shooting, you mess it up, and then like you keep messing it up. Have you like done anything like that before? This happened to me. It happened to me once, and it was during the first. It was during Naika, uh-huh. my first time, and there was like this really long. It was a pretty decently long scene and pretty complicated words. And I'd been rehearsing this thing all day, like mm. preparing for this one scene. I get there, all goes out the window. Dude, the pressure is insane. Yeah, and I was lucky. It was like the last film scene of the day, and the director was like, "Okay, let's just stop and not do this one today." Oh, okay, um, that's nice of them. And then after that, it didn't happen again. And I don't like. I think what what ended up happening was I ended up getting more time 
uh, to to prepare and to to rehearse and that sort of thing. But then after that, it, you just have to learn to relax. I, I think the one the one part of acting and about line like getting lines right is that it's not the end of the world if you mess it up. By the way, the the correct thing to do actually is if the director doesn't say cut, then just play the rest of the scene. Mm -hmm. Or if you get it wrong in the middle, then you can then you can reset at the beginning and then say that line again. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So it's not the end of the world at all if you if you mess up the line. Mm -hmm. You just gotta you just gotta move on. Mm -hmm. uh, and yeah, that's that's freaking hard. Yeah. For beginner actors, that sort of thing. Uh, they feel like oh, yeah. everybody's looking at me, there's a yeah. camera, the director, like other oh, the is supposed to be putting it. Like no, no, no. No, no, that's not we've all been there, okay? Like every single actor who's been on set has been there. Yeah. You know? Even actors that I work with today, like they'll mess up a line like once a day or something like that, you know? Yeah. And then it's all that happens is they're just like, okay, let me say it again. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What's important is once you say it again, if you say it wrong to then reset your brain to then make sure that you're still getting the same emotions across. Sometimes, I don't know if this has happened to you before, but like I'll have memorized the script in Thai and then like on the day the director will be like, can you say this line in English? And then it really throws me off. Cause like, I feel like mm. first of all, for some reason, my English just fails me. And I'm like, how do you, how do you, how would I say this like? Oh yeah, yeah. Like natively, like not, I can translate it, the yeah. meaning, but it's like, how would a native person say this line? And also because I prepared for it in Thai. Mm. And so just like I was saying before with like the, the like the sequential. Broken continuity. Yeah. <laughs> it's like the multiverse, like another like way of saying the line. But like, yeah, like sometimes I'll be like, oh, can you say this line in English? I'll be like, it really like, it really like throws me. I'm like, especially one time I had to say some like bad words mm. in Thai, mm. but it was unscripted, but they were just like, just say whatever you want. Just say like, just like, nah, just like do what it, like you can say anything. Then suddenly the acting coach on set was like, actually, can you say it in English? Now the thing is, I swear in my private life, quite a lot, but just with people I'm very close to, I don't, especially like, you know, if I'm on streaming or I'm on, if I'm on stream or I'm on YouTube, I tend to keep things pretty like PG. Yeah. And I was just like, so just like stunned. Cause I was like, I, you want me to say what? <laughs> luckily, luckily the acting teacher, like they were fluent in English. So they were like, just say Just this. for me, do you remember what it was? Uh, yeah, it was, it was, yeah. Uh, the, uh, <laughs> you can bleep, you can bleep it. No, no, yeah, no, it's fine. No, um, well the first line was like, it was like, I know, blah, 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 blah. And I couldn't, I was like, idiot. <laughs> like, it was so bad. And then, and then like, no, no, it wasn't like that cringe. Okay, okay. It okay. wasn't that cringe. I was like, oh my God, you freaking idiot. Like, it wasn't like that. But okay, like okay. the acting coach was like, wouldn't you say like, like, are you fucking dumb or something like that? Yeah. And so that was why I went with, I was like, are you fucking dumb, bro? Like kind of thing. I said it in a really strong Australian accent, which was also like kind of funny. Like it wasn't a meme, but like a lot of people like cut that out and was like, it was like a mood, like for a lot of people. Okay. Like I feel like, just from our conversation, I feel like you're very, I'm positive, but I feel like you're even more positive than I am and like a lot more like, man, I'm just doing like, like, like just a lot more chill. Yeah, cause I've, I think the, the more that, the more you learn to accept uh, and appreciate different parts of the culture, the more you feel like you can be a part of it. Um, and then this ends up having a lot of other interesting advantages. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Like what? Well, people take you more seriously. Oh, okay. uh, people, people respect you more, um, you end up giving more opportunities. It's just the more that you conform, the things uh, become. Yeah, nah, dude, I think I was like, it took me a while to like really immerse myself, especially earlier on. The the respecting people who are, and I, I still struggle with this, I think definitely is like respecting people who are just like a year older than you <laughs> to the degree of, yeah to the degree of, oh, but wouldn't be like, yeah. you know, and you're just like, what, 29 or something, 28. Yeah. But but the thing is, what, I, 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 I feel weird about it, but then I'll meet somebody who's like 26 mm -hmm. and they'll treat me like, yeah, but yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, you know, yeah. and then I'm like, oh, dude, I, like, I know what you're saying. So just for you guys at home <laughs> in Thailand, if you, if there's someone older than you, you have like the prefix P and if you, if they're younger than you, you call them Nong or like, you don't even have to say Nong, but you just call them like by their name. Yeah. So it, it, do you have the same experience? So obviously when we started out, we were younger. Mm -hmm. Now we've been in the industry for a little while. Like when you start out, you call everyone P because in general, most people are older than you. Yeah. Yeah. And now have you started this thing where like you work with people and you ask them like, well, how old are you? And they'll be like, I'm like 20, I'm like 21. You're like, shit, like you feel like, like people start calling you P or like you will call someone P, but they actually like, 
the same age or younger than you mm. just because like it, you kind of like got used to calling everyone P because they were older but now yeah. you're the old one. Yeah. Shit catches up fast. Yeah, I, I think it's, this is why, okay, a side note again. When you're in the business world, age is actually your advantage. Mm. People take you more seriously. Uh -huh. uh, the longer that you've been doing a certain business, the longer, the, the more credibility people give you. And this is also true in the acting world. But in the acting world, getting older typically means like, depending on how you look, can mean less opportunities. So there's this gap in between where it's like, if you are no longer look young enough to be like the lead guy, mm. but you're not old enough to be like the dad, dad or something, yes, yes. Uh, then you might struggle for a while. But in business, in business getting older is actually, is better. Yeah. So I, for anybody out there who's like an actor, who's, you also have to, you gotta do something else too. Yeah. You gotta figure out. You gotta have another source of income. I think like that's one, uh, having like done a little bit of work in Japan, I've found that one of the big differences between the Thai and Japanese entertainment industry is in Japanese, you can be like whatever age and still like debut at any time and there's like still chances for you to like have your big break. Whereas in Thailand, I feel like it's not impossible, of course, but starting out young and by young, you know, relative term, but if you start in your early to mid twenties, you got a better chance of, well, you probably have more opportunities as a up and coming or lead actor because because I feel like a lot of the main roles are not written for that kind of like limbo between young man and dad. That, yeah. That, yeah. That are like 30, early 30s is like a, a tough, tough. It depends yeah. how you look too. Mm -hmm. If you look young, then it doesn't really matter. But yeah. 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 So I think people that want to pursue a career in Thailand, that's something to like keep in mind as well is like not your age, but how, how old or young you look can yeah. have a big impact on your opportunities. So exercise regularly. Uh, skincare guys. Eat your vegetables. Guys. Do your skincare routine. Sunscreen. Sunscreen. So important. Get enough sleep. Yeah. Did you, when you started off, were you like not really like into like self care? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Dude, cause- Mistake, I, by the way. Yeah, oh yeah. Oh, <laughs> dude. If I could go back in time and slip slop, oh, we, in Australia, we have a saying called slip slop slap. It means you wear a hat, you wear sunscreen and you wear long sleeve. I can't remember it, but anyway, it's it's a guide for summer. Okay. To stay cover up and not get yourself burnt. Um, yeah, I never wore sunscreen growing up. Yeah. Uh, I hated yeah. it. I was like, this feels disgusting. I hate this. And yeah. Australia has like very strong sun. Yep. Very strong UV. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it did do wonders for my skin. Yeah. Yeah. But moving to Thailand and especially being in this industry, yeah, skincare and self care is like super duper important. I was like, you know, I was kind of like, one of, not a, not a, like a bro at the beginning, but I was kind of like, guys, I need to do that stuff. Mm. Yes, we do. Yeah. We should yeah, all do yeah. that. We should all yeah. do that. Yeah. Anyway, moving on. Were you kind of surprised by the distance between like Thai actors or celebrities and the fans? Because I feel like even in like places like Japan or like where I'm from in Australia, the only place I have experiences is that celebrities are kind of like have a very far existence. Like they feel like they're far away from you. They don't feel, you know, they don't feel like if you really wanted to meet them, there's like not really any opportunities to meet them, even if you wanted to, you know what I mean? Like, oh, okay, they're at a, they're at like a premiere for their movie that you can stand like really far away if you're lucky and like maybe see them or you see them by chance. But like in Thailand, we have like fan meetings, we have events, we have all these opportunities for fans to meet us like really up close and like have like personal interactions. Is that something that like you, you were like kind of like surprised by like when you took part? I mean, I, I'll just jump in because I, I actually kind of like it. Yeah. Because like these fans, like they're, like they're people and I don't really like, I wouldn't, <laughs> dehumanization is not the right term, but do you know what I mean? It's like, I don't like it when people just like numbers uh -huh. or, they, or they're just like, they don't exist. Like it's like really nice to like actually like have interactions and actually get to speak to people as opposed to, I don't know what it's like, but you know, if you were like, I don't know, Justin Bieber and everyone's like screaming your name, it's like, it just, to me, it feels like it all just becomes one as opposed to separate personal like mm. entities. Mm. Even like with presents and stuff, like could you imagine like getting to be able to send like your favorite singer, your favorite actor, whatever, like being able to send them a present and then have and get an opportunity to see them wear it or something like that. Like if they send you a shirt and they would actually like, like wear the thing that you got them, you know what I mean? Like that kind of stuff. Do you, you find like that's uh, like surprising? I, I guess I, because I haven't had any experience with like other celebrity cultures, it never even, never even crossed me as something that was different. Oh, okay. Yeah, because in the States, like I was never, yeah. I mean, I know in the States, it's like actually pretty intense. 
Right. When, it, especially if you get to a certain level and then wherever you go, paparazzi. And here I actually kind of like that paparazzi is illegal. Um, I didn't know it was illegal. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. You can't have, you can't, in the US, it's literally a viable career to be a person who just stalks celebrities with like professional grade cameras, follows them, take picture, interview. This is all legal, completely legal. And then if, for the photographers who take the photo of them like on a beach, anywhere, whatever, that photo is then the property of the photographer. Right. Not the celebrity who is image that they're directly using to then sell. Mm -hmm. You can't do that in Thailand. Like Thailand, it's the, the news that comes out is leaked stuff or like videos that fans take, but that, that's like, you know, they're going somewhere very public where it's very clear that they're supposed to be like a lot of- Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So like if you're like somewhere where you know that like there's a chance of being like take like a video being taken of you, it's like something that's like something that you need to accept. But if someone takes a photo of you and like you're private, like if you, is that what you're saying? Like, yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Like if I, if I were to walk outside my house and then like there were to be people like uh, there with cameras and stuff saying that, you know, very clearly that they're going to just post that immediately. That's mm. not, that's not okay. Right. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Damn. Because when you were talking about paparazzi, Literally, you know, like my brain was like thinking like, you know what, I haven't really seen any paparazzi in Thailand. And then you're like, they're illegal. And I was like, huh, that actually makes a lot of sense. Yeah, yeah. True that, damn. Now this this sort of kind of goes out the window for international celebrities that come here because the fans are so uh, much different. Um, right, right, right. So right. they'll follow them and like, Yes, that celebrity could choose to take legal action against said person who's like, mm -hmm. you're filming this? Are, are you posting it? Like, mm -hmm. you, you can do that, but you know what? Why would you? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Right, right. Hey, thank you so much for making it this far into the video. There's actually an extended cut of my video with Luke, which has around 18 minutes of extra footage. It has some extra stories such as the first time Luke and I met, which in my opinion, pretty good story. The extended cut is available on my Patreon. I left a link for it down in the description below. So if you're interested, please go and check it out. Now back to the video. Last question for today, like as a, for me as a foreign actor, and now like, this is something that I thought about a lot, like especially when I kind of got my start up in my, in like the first few series that I was in, I always felt like, like I don't really have like as many Thai fans. I felt like a lot of my fans were based like abroad as opposed to in Thailand. And that was also on me because I, I probably didn't like you were uh, mentioning before, I didn't like throw myself in enough into the culture, into like being, like being Thai, do you know what I mean? Mm. And that, and I feel like maybe that made it harder for fans to connect with me a little bit because they felt like that there was like that the foreign there's like a like a like a like a like a glass barrier between us that was like you know if they they feel like and even that but it does happen like they'll feel like oh if they say this then I won't understand like they they they, they feel like the disconnect whether it be like culturally or whatever and that was for like probably on me but also you know because I can speak English and also Japanese I feel like. Yeah, like I have quite a large like international fan base or Japanese fan base, but I wanted to know what it's like for you. Do you feel like compared to maybe native Thai people, do you feel like that your fan base is like more spread out as opposed to like being like centered like in Thailand? I think, uh, yeah, there's some there's some good spread. Definitely, definitely the majority is Thai. You can easily look at that with the Instagram data. Um, but you mean majority, you mean like more than 50% or you're saying like 30? Yeah, let's see. So we look at countries. We got Thailand as, yeah, 33%. Oh, that's kind of similar to mine, actually. Mine's like at about 30, 30 something percent. And then Indonesia, 14. Shout out Indonesia. <laughs> <laughs> Philippines, 9.5. This is just let's the go. last seven days though. Uh, Isn't it? Really? I think so. I think if you change it to all time. But, okay. Or like the last 90 days, you'll get slightly different. Like, it'll be similar, but slightly different. Oh, interesting. Yeah, that's pretty much the same. Yeah. My apologies. Uh, Brazil, 5%. And then India at 3.6%. So thank you everybody so much. But yeah, uh, I think Thai, Thailand is definitely the base. I, and I think it, it's cool. It's really great to see that. If I do a singing event, like around, I think the last time that I was really impressed is when I went to- You went to, to Konkan, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And the, the hang was like full. Like really? When I, yeah, when I started singing. Was that like, solo or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Damn. Well, it's just like it was a clinic uh, promotional promotional event, uh -huh, uh -huh. Um, and sang some songs, and like everybody was like, yeah, from 
the bottom floor to like the top floor of the oh, whole area. Nice, dude. That's so it was, sick. it was really cool. Um, and I haven't gotten the chance to do another event in Bangkok, like doing a mini concert type of event in Bangkok. But I'm I'm imagining if once it happens again, it'll be quite a quite an experience. That's cool. That's cool. Um, and then, but I went to Singapore recently, and then we announced that I was going to Singapore. And actually, there was like some a quite quite a bit of Singapore fans that was like following and. Oh. Around there, yeah. Wait, is that yeah. alcohol? Yeah, a suntory. Right, suntory, right, right. Yeah. Damn. And the the biggest Japanese fa base is uh, Twitter, for sure. Right. Yeah. Right. When whenever I tweet anything, all the com a lot of the comments are Japanese. Uh, okay. Yeah, I yeah. think that's a reflection of like I think a lot of more Jap uh, Japanese people on Twitter as opposed to Instagram. Yeah. 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 Anyway, that was. Yeah. Anyway, that was uh, what we were Longer planning on talking about. International <laughs> fan base. But yes, I want to say thank you to all the international fans. <laughs> Uh, everybody in Thailand as well. Yeah, this has been a fantastic video. Thank you so I much do. for having me on the show. I appreciate you coming on. It really means a lot because like, I've honestly like, I've been wanting to like do like collabs or asking guests to come on and I was just, I'm a little bit shy. I don't like to ask. But so anyway, guys, thanks so much for watching. I hope you found this like insightful into what it's like working as foreign actors in Thailand and maybe like, other people who are interested in working here too. Maybe you guys got some good advice from us, hopefully. Like we are not like qualified advice givers, but we do have some experience and we share Qualified it. advice givers? I think we're definitely qualified advice givers. I, All we were doing was giving advice. I think it's self-doubt. I think it's a self-doubt. Yeah, I, I yeah. just, I think what it is is I don't like to accept responsibility. I don't want to give someone oh. advice, they follow it, and then it like makes their situation worse. So I kind of just preface everything by saying like, I'm not qualified. But, but I guess we are, because no, like we, we said, yeah. there aren't that many of us. No. Because Hot dudes, no, no, no. <laughs> when, <laughs> when we gave advice, we said like, yes, it's a good time, but also the dedication that that is required is yeah. not insignificant. It's not insignificant. We're not saying, we're not yeah. saying that getting into the Thai industry and you're gonna be rich and it's gonna be great. And it's, it's like, no, like you're, you have to put in the work, like anything. But it's like Hollywood, it's like you can work your butt off and put yourself in the best position to succeed. But if, you know, unfortunately, like, I mean, luck is like a big factor. You just need to be, put yourself in a position to succeed at all times. And then when the moment comes, hopefully, sorry, if the moment comes and you'll be ready for it. Yeah. And if it doesn't come, then that's why you got the backup jobs. That's why you can't just, just rely on the acting stuff. Right, right. Yeah. All right, man, so is there anything like upcoming projects or anything that you want to plug? Yeah, absolutely. So at, the, at this time, the Jungle series will be out right now on GMM 25 and View. Uh, it comes out every Monday and Tuesday at 8.30 p.m. and then at 10 p.m. On, on View. So check that out. That's a wonderful series about five, five kind of playboy guys who go through a big journey of having like a secret bar that they've, that they've kind of culminated together and uh, kind of do like, you know, degenerate things sometimes, but then end up, end up being, you know, good people in the end, maybe, Yes or not. Uh, <laughs> you gotta watch to find out. Yeah, you gotta watch to find out. But if you're seeing this video right now, you gotta start at the beginning uh, and then watch it. But I, ha it's one of my, it's one of my favorite shows. Like I, I would feel completely comfortable recommending even my friends to watch this show because it's not cringy. It's, like, <laughs> it's not, it's not cringy Thai drama. This is like, it's. But I feel like a lot of GMM series are not cringy Thai drama. Yeah, it's quite, quite well done. My movie will be out hopefully at the end of the year. It's called Slith, Slith Project La. It's a futuristic story. Uh, it's set in Bangkok in the future where things have kind of gone wrong, pollution wise and uh, all like different wise. Kind of post apocalyptic. Yeah, kind of post apocalyptic. So it's a story about good versus evil and sort of has some themes of uh, Ready Player One. Oh, okay. So there's, Sweet. A, there's a gaming theme to it. Nice, uh, nice. Futuristic <laughs> sci fi fantasy, myself and Mukda. And just for the record, not there aren't a lot of sci-fi Thai productions. Nope. So yeah, the the I think the CGI is going to be really great because and there's quite a bit of CGI, quite a bit of you know otherworldly stuff because it's a sci-fi fantasy film. And they've been working. We finished filming early this year, and now the post-production series has been going on much longer than the at the actual oh, filming right, process. Because of the CGI. Because of the CGI. Okay, so okay. the longer that it's in post-production, the better the film is going to be. Nice. So I'm very happy about that. 
that we're not rushing any kind of release date or anything like that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So and I'm right now I'm in the middle of filming Faceless Love. It's a it's a kind of an office drama, but the the kind of cool plot point is that the main guy is do do just mm -hmm. yeah he he can't see people's faces, so he can't read people's expressions. Oh, okay. Yeah. Is this like an original story? Uh, no, we bought the we bought the rights. Oh, okay. uh, I think from a Japanese drama. Oh, okay. And cool. so I play his kind of mentor, older brother type figure throughout oh, the nice. story. Um, but yeah, you'll have to see from there because I'm not I'm not I'm not the main guy, but I am extremely important. <laughs> <laughs> basically, without me, there is no story. <laughs> Dude, I'm gonna use that line sometime. By the way, guys, like, I'm not the main guy. But I'm really important. Yeah. That's just my motto for life. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, yeah, I hope you enjoyed today's video and yeah, catch another video coming very, very soon. See ya.